Okay, when I purchased this new block, it came without this bearing, so they're hard to get a hold of. But I found a blue one. So, um, the crankshaft is coded B for this part. Uh, we have to do the internal diameter of the support. Okay. Line you up here. Okay. So I'm going here. Which is pretty spot on. That's where the pistons, that's where the force is, I guess. Then we need 4701. And we've got it exact, 4701. So, looking at the service manual, so my crankshaft is a B, 47.01, I could either do a black or a blue, I can get hold of a blue, so I think that's what we'll go for. Before I start, this is not a, this is a disclosure, um, this, I, I'm fully aware this is not the right way to put in a bearing, uh, but needs must, and I don't have a, a press um, to do this, so I'm having to improvise a bit. So my idea is, I'm heating the head up, like this. Very, it's, it's nice and hot now. I don't want to obviously melt it. I don't know what this kicks out, but I don't think it's 600 degrees C. But who knows? And huh. so it's a bearing puller with some speed tape, aluminium tape, to give it a soft knocking face. And I'm just gonna gently tap it and the bearing which is a blue I've managed to source for a lot of money it's about a hundred pounds that with postage and VAT customs etc anyways um, da -da -da -da. yeah so that's been in the freezer all night so it's, it's nice and cold that's nice and hot Let's do it before things get equalised again. I hope this works. But again, this is not a instructional video. It's just a bodge. If it works, it works. So the head's hot. Which is always nice. Right, you're also meant to use some molly on this, which I also don't have, so we're just going to use engine oil. Which, at the end of the day, that's what it's going to be sitting in anyway. Um, I think I might be generous this time. No, 
Nice and lubed. Only one on the internet. New one, new old stock. At this moment, anyway. So I hope I don't mess it up. Okay. Um, right, so there's a little tang, line that up. So it's gone a bit wrong because what I didn't realise is it's you have to get it past this point so it goes further down than this uh, face basically so I'm having to use a socket now which is almost as good as I'm gonna get. The problem is it's got a chamfer, so it's splaying these edges a bit. But the actual bearing, it looks worse than it is. But it is going every time I hit it. Up there, happy ish. Right, 
Right, so from this side it looks perfect. There's a little burr, I'm just going to get some 1200 on it, just on this edge. But it, that is nothing. So there you go. How not to do a bearing. I think my next purchase is to get a bench press going forward. But right, there's a little there's something there which I need to sort out. Looking from this side. But it's okay. Right, the new bearings in. Happy enough. There's a few marks when I had to kind of tap it. But I've just got some there. Uh, if you see, just there. But if you look closely, it's not actually on the face. It's just this this face that you can see. I put my finger. There's, there's no ridges at all. There might be some a little bit there, but I'm just gonna polish it off. Happy enough, but I should have got up this to do this, but it worked, so yeah. Good job. Other side, nice. So I'm going close now to um, start the assembly, which is exciting. Um, there's one thing, I can't get this dowel out. It's in good condition, so I'm just going to leave it. I could probably damage something trying to get it out for no reason. So, I want to make sure these surfaces are flat because I don't know the history of this block. So, I've done both sides with engineering blue, also known as a permanent marker pen. So, I know it's not ideal, but it's. I've done it with this straight edge, if it is actually that straight, because it's painted, but anyway. Um, and it looks fine, but I think it's just a good idea just to get some 1000s wet and dry and just give it a shine, get all this crap off as well. Uh, this is a bit of overspray, stuff like that. So, because I've got this dowel, I'm not sure how to do it, I think I'll start on the other side. That's ready. Now I can either put a block on there, um, I'll use that, we'll see. We're basically looking for any high spots. So I think, yeah, kind of like this.
Mm. Is it gonna work? It's my last sheet of uh, fine. The problem is I've got the masking tape. Right, it like this, so it covers it. This is, I would say, but that's the edge. It's a bit higher there. Just taking this off, less start makes sense because that's the exhaust it's just as well over heat is and that seems to be the highest so So I'm noticing a bit round here, but there's nothing horrendous. I quite like what it's doing. I might need some more paper. Trying to push down the centre line and I just, as much as I can. And this motion is like I'm not pushing at an angle. I'm trying. It's like uh, tapping your head and rubbing your tummy. <laughs> just gently let the weight of the block do its thing.
Right, so you can see where well, it's polished here compared to here. But it, it might be because of where I was sanding. I don't want to go too much. I've checked it with the square. There's no light passing through. So I think it's good. Right, on the other side, same thing I'm noticing. I know this is shit. This is, it's not an engineering shop. It's a garden shed. But exhaust, it seems to be a bit higher here. Only slightly, but. So I'm doing this by hand because of this. It's, I'm just drawing it down. That's the other side. Looking good. In my non-professional opinion. That noise is good. show you one hand but shine a light see if you can see anything there 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 hopefully not and that's it ready for jet washing final clean and then we'll hone it.
Right, I'm going to start to own these cylinders. Uh, don't seem too bad. There's a bit of surface corrosion. There's no scores. So I'm using this bog brush type. I own it. I think it's 320. I'm not sure. If you're interested, I'll leave a description. I got it off Amazon. Uh, so the idea is to get a crisscross down the cylinder and it captures the oil. Um, yeah. So you've always got a film of oil, not so theory, in. Um, yeah, well, it keeps the cylinder lining covered in oil through the strokes. Now, if you look at what real honing is, <laughs> then you will not, it's done with a constant water jet and a machine shop. You know, this is just to get this finish a bit better than what it is. So I'm just going to clean the crap off. The idea is, is to have a nice clean cloth at the end of it. Okay. And drill. On the clean surface. Get your engine oil. Where it might get messy. A bit more than that, I'd say. And keep one hand clean. It's probably in the garage. See a slight score there, so I want to try and get rid of that. Let's get rid of that old shitty oil. idea is to get the scores out 
and leave a nice crisscross so the oil's got something to grab to when it's throughout its operation and to get this nice and clean so there's nothing left on this white rag I'm just using acetone I don't know what the muck is well all sorts of grit, carbon embedded grit from the uh, machine and it's looking good something quite satisfying about doing this I will keep going. I'll finish it off with MEK. It's just I'm running a bit low on, on the stuff. And I think that's the best degreaser I've ever come across in my life. So there you go. This is before, scored a little bit. Probably shiny in parts. And after. Beautiful.